So hello. Uh, in this presentation, uh, we'd like to introduce a reservoir kernel code evaluation on HTML for FX. Uh, this is a result of a collaboration with Schroenberg, AM, and Fujitsu. This is our uh, agenda for this presentation. So, Simone, uh, could you please uh, introduce you and uh, your background of application and the kernel code? Yes. Um... Hello, uh, my name is Simone Rinko, and I'm a software engineer, HPC engineer at Schlumberger, uh, working on the Intersect Reservoir Simulator. And in collaboration with Fujitsu, we have tested a simple code that we believe it is representative to assess the performance of a given hardware, which is capable of running a reservoir simulator. Um, to give the audience a little bit of context, a reservoir simulator is the process of predicting the behavior of an oil and gas reservoir, subject to some uh, operations performed on the wells, which are on the surface. Typically, we start from the definition of a geological model and the description of the fluid properties and the design strategy on the wells. And then a simulator can give the reservoir engineers detailed information that they can use to optimize the management of the reservoir uh, under different possible scenarios over a period of time that can stretch up to several years. Uh, a reservoir simulator is basically uh, a software which solves a very complex mathematical model. But at the foundations of this model, there are two very simple equations, which are the conservation of mass and the Darcy's law. So uh, both equations um, depends on the characteristics of both the fluid and the rock. So, for example, we can see the conservation mass depends on the fluid density and the rock porosity, while the Darcy's law depends on the rock permeability and, and the fluid viscosity. So, the Darcy's law is a simple empirical law which describes how fluids move in porous medias under the actions of a driving force, which is typically the typically they are the pressure of the field and the gravity. In order to solve this mathematical model, we combined the two equations and we end up with a single equation, which we call the balance equation, which is basically the conservation of mass uh, using the uh, 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 Darcy's law as, as a model for the fluid velocity. And typically, uh, we need to discretize these equations because they are partial differential equations which are not nonlinear. So we divide our reservoirs in cells. Typically, a model can have up to millions or tens of millions of cells. And we need to solve these balance equations in every single cell. Uh, we call a cell a control volume, uh, which we can see here in red and green. So for, for each given control volume, we need to calculate or approximate the mass accumulation term, which depends on the control volume itself. While the second term, which is the max flux, represent the exchange of mass at the boundaries of the control volume. So necessarily it will involve all the neighbor cells as well, represented here in green. And the term on the right-hand side is the contribution of the wells. It is basically the human control, the, human, uh, the control the humans have on the reservoir. But in our sample code, we have discarded this for, for simplicity. Mm. In our code, we, in our mock code, we have used a very well-known problem in the industry called SP, SP10 model 2, which is a model with approximately uh, 1 million cells. So it is not uh, very small, but not, not even huge, uh, which we believe 1 million cells is good to represent the, to assess the, perf the performance of a given hardware. And why the original, the original model has only two uh, phases, the oil and water phase, we have also simulated the presence of a gas phase because typically we have reservoirs with gas as well. And for each time step, we have simulated the calculation of both the mass accumulation and the mass flux. Uh, our sample code uh, reflects what a, a real simulator is doing. So given the solution at a given time step, we need to calculate the solution at the next time step. So we have the outer loop for every single time. And because we have to solve nonlinear equations, we have another loop which is the, basically the linearization, the Newton iterations, which in our sample code, we have coded a number of five iterations. And then to approximate the flux, for example, 
we need to iterate over each connection of the, in, in the reservoir, and which we can call a connection an edge because we can think about the cells and the connection as nodes and edges in a graph. So to calculate the flux, we need the properties of the fluid and the rock at both sides, which we call source and target cells. And in particular, we are interested in the pressure difference, which is the driving force of the system. And the inner loop is a loop over equations because the balance equation is equation for the balance of a single component. But in a typical reservoir, we have three components, oil, gas, and water component, plus potentially a fourth equation, which describes the uh, energy equation in the thermal simulations. So the inner loop is the loop that opens the door to many uh, possible simulation, uh, many possible optimization techniques such as loop unrolling or vectorization. And in this loop, we calculate the mass flux for this for a particular component, and we need to update the mass balance in both the source and target set. So these four loops very well represent uh, what the simulator is doing, and Fujitsu has used our sample code to test the, their hardware for a possible reservoir simulation applications. And at Schlumberger, we are really looking forward to testing our uh, commercial software intersect on their x64 fx hardware in the very near future and this concludes my presentation and thank you very much uh, thank you simone so our uh, next slide shows a summary of our evaluation on kernel loop uh, in this study uh, we evaluated a performance on hdfs uh, one node uh, with 48 cores uh, running uh, 2.2 gigahertz. Uh, 32 gigabyte uh, one high value memory uh, using Fujitsu compiler and OpenMP and the memory interleaving. Also, we run the uh, same code on a uh, small Xeon Cascade Lake uh, for reference with these conditions. Uh, as we can see, uh, HTFS with a uh, yellow line. Uh, so, sorry. Uh, the, the graph in uh, right-hand side shows uh, enough time of kernel loop in log scale. And the horizontal axis shows the number of cores. Uh, as we can see, HTC uh, with yellow line shows similar performance with Xeon in blue line uh, from one to eight cores, uh, even though HTC of FX has 60% lower clock rate. Uh, for larger cores, H64 effects a performance scales up to 48 cores. Uh, in this case, uh, we could see H64 uh, effects module uses SVE uh, for small iteration in, in a loop, a uh, three iteration in this case. And uh, in the case of Dion, uh, this is generated a uh, SSE code for this small iteration. Uh, it might be reasonable uh, not to use ABS in this case. And the uh, red line shows the re uh, result of our assembly tuning result on uh, HTC Vegas, and uh, we could see more than 60% performance improvement. Uh, please note uh, it is 60% better performance than Xeon uh, from 1 to 8 cores. Uh, even uh, HTC Vegas has 60% lower clock. So then uh, next slide shows a brief analysis in the viewpoint of bandwidth. A vertical axis in this graph shows a memory bandwidth in gigabyte per second. Uh, we can see H24FX performance scales up to 48 cores, and H24FX base performance was 30% of peak memory performance. And then uh, we could propose a memory latency might be a bottleneck. Uh, by eye tuning, uh, we could have uh, more than 50% bandwidth by uh, hiding a memory latency. Uh, it does not uh, reach a peak performance, uh, then we might have room to improve this performance. So the, this slide shows the example of a kernel loop vectorization. A simulated instruction enables to treat uh, multiple elements in the loop uh, using a single instruction uh, up to eight double precision elements. Uh, predicate register 
in other words, a mask register in SV enables to vectorize this small loop. Uh, but we need uh, additional tuning to have a better performance because memory rest is a bottleneck. Then uh, we consider to unroll outer loop. Uh, we have an iteration for edges in outer loop. As shown in the left figure, a iteration for each edge has a load and a calculation cycle. Uh, unrolling outer loop and moving a load restriction for next edge uh, before previous calculation, as shown in green arrow, uh, we could uh, hide the memory latency. So uh, this is a takeaway of, of this presentation and the future work. Uh, for the future work, I uh, will proceed a more practical application evaluation. So uh, lastly, uh, the authors would like to acknowledge the assistance of this uh, evaluation by these uh, colleagues from Shinobesh um, and Fujitsu. Uh, thank you very much for the listening. <laughs>